What's up guys, today we're going to be going over what the DPS meta is right now in Destiny 2 The Witch Queen. There's going to be all kinds of DPS testing in this video. And overall the point is when you load up a raid boss, what do you want to be using? And that's going to be the question we're going to try to solve today. And I'm not going to be testing every single combo of every weapon ever. Since there wasn't too many changes to power weapons going into the season, I have a good idea of what the top options should be. And those will be what I'll be testing in this video. So starting off with the new Parasite Grenade Launcher, be extremely good for burst damage due to the Worm's Hunger perk and times 20 stacks. So looking at that, the damage on Carl with times 20 is gonna be really high at over 300,000. Now without any stacks, so if you shoot more than one, the remaining shots will hit for this, which is over 100,000, so quite a good drop off. And I've never tested if the worm byproduct buff its own damage, and as you see, it does not. So after your first shot, they will all drop down to that 100,000 number. So the total damage of each shot with the parasite with the full buff was 314,000, then without it, 105,000. Now we we'll look at the rate of fire of the weapon. For all these single shot weapons, I'll be doing two and four shots. All this will be with max reload speed, taking 6 seconds. So the Parasite 1, just like the burst, is 314,000, 2, 206. Then with 4, it drops down to 104,000, so it drops off very aggressively as you shoot more and more. This weapon also holds 7 ammo with no reserve perks. With double reserves, it goes up to 11. So the total damage output of the weapon is just under 1 million, all the way up to 1.3 million, which is very good as you'll see throughout the video. Those numbers are actually pretty solid. So moving on to the second weapon, it's going to be the G Horn with its Wolfpack rounds. And as we've shown off in previous seasons, the Wolfpack rounds of this rocket do less damage to bosses than majors or anything like that. So looking at damage on Carl, it's going to hit all those numbers, but the real numbers on a boss, the rocket itself does the same damage, but it's the wolf packs that do a lot less. So total damage of one G1 rocket was 93,430, which isn't that good compared to other things as you'll see. But if we go ahead and look at the DPS numbers, they're going to be pretty good because of the fact that it's a two mag. So shooting off two and four is going to be a lot quicker than other rockets, which means the DPS is 145,000. Then once you have to reload once, it drops down to under 80,000. So quite the drastic drop off. So G-Horn is really only good for that initial two rocket burst. And it holds seven up to nine with double reserves, which means the total damage output is 654 up to 840, which is quite a lot less than even the Parasite that we tested so far. So for boss DPS and total damage output, in reality, you only want one G-Horn, then the rest of the team using Legendary Rockets because the one G-Horn will give everyone else will pack rounds. And then you can take advantage of damage perks and the impact damage. Because G-Horn has grenades and horseshoes, you never get that impact damage. And the perk you want on a regular rocket launcher is going to be either Lasting Impression or Explosive Light. Your numbers are going to be extremely close, so I think Explosive Light will be a little bit better overall. Looking at damage on the Strike Boss with will pack rounds. For all these different numbers, which add up to 146,000, which is gonna be a lot more than G Horn because it has a perk and also the impact damage. So, now moving on to the DPS of one of these legendary rockets, shooting off two and four with no like ambitious or perks like that, just straight up one magazine shots. The DPS is gonna be 135,000 and drop down to 92,000. So G Horn was slightly better for DPS, but over multiple shots, the explosive light holds up a lot better. And where the Legendary Rockets have a huge advantage compared to G Horn is their total damage output, once again 7 and 9 rockets, but now over 1 million and 1.3 million, which is way higher than G Horn and will be better for raid boss fights where you need all that extra damage. Moving on to the coil, which used to have a weird boss debuff to its damage, but now I believe that is gone either on purpose or by mistake, I'm not sure. But looking at damage on Carl, it hit for this 13,000 and this 7,000 number. We do the same thing to a boss. As you'll see, the numbers are the exact same. So whatever they did removed that negative huge boss decrease it had. So damage of a coil shot is now 170,000, which is way higher than it used to be and higher than anything we've tested so far outside of the parasite for shot. But the thing that will kind of hold a coil back is just how long it takes to shoot. So once again, looking at two and four rockets, it's going to take quite a while, 9.7 seconds, which means the DPS is 90,000, then over four shots, 70,000, which are still definitely good numbers, but a lot lower than the Parasite and the Legendary GL. And Coil only holds six ammo, then up to eight. So looking at total damage output, it's going to be between 1 million and 1.4 almost. So 
once again very good total damage output numbers but just a little bit lower dps than the legendary rocket and moving on to the final rocket is going to be the deathbringer which has always had among the best numbers in the game so i'll get damage on a boss each one will hit up to 27 031 and there's gonna be seven of those projectiles which means almost 190,000 damage per individual rocket and looking at the rate of fire of a weapon with two and four shots and i'm going to time it from when i release the rocket to let it drop which i think is like the most accurate way to time it and that took eight seconds which means dps is 104,000, and over four barely falls off at all to 93,000. so those numbers are really good but this is gonna be hard to actually realistically get those numbers all the time with how inaccurate the individual projectiles are and the total damage output once again is among the highest numbers at 1.3 all the way up to 1.7 so in a situation where you can pull that off and hit all seven it is the best numbers now moving on to sleeper which was the meta from last season with the artifact mod but now without it can it still hold up it hits for 100,000 on carl Looking at the rate of fire with one mag and two mags, so four and eight shots, it's gonna take quite a while. Four shots took roughly just under five seconds. Then with eight, it's gonna take 10.6. So DPS is pretty good, kind of right in there with G Horn and Coil at 85, then 75,000. So those numbers are still very respectable and will get the job done. Now, looking at the total damage output of this weapon, it holds 13. Then with double reserves, it'll go up to 16. So the total damage output is going to be between 1.3 and 1.6, which is extremely good, higher than all the rockets outside of the Deathbringer. So Sleeper seems like a good pick for those longer boss fights where you need more damage. And how about the 1000 Voices, which was also meta last season? Look at damage on Carl. It's only hit for these two different numbers 10 times each. And if we add all those up, it's only hit for a total of 118,000 on Carl, which we can kind of already eyeball the math. That's already less than most of the rockets. And it's going to take quite a bit longer to shoot each shot than a rocket. But if you look at the rate of fire with four, then eight shots, one mag, two mag, it's going to take a very long time. Then for the two mags, it's going to take very long, over 14.9 seconds, which means the DPS is 66, then over two, 63. So the DPS barely falls off at all, but it doesn't start that high to begin with. This weapon also holds seven with no reserve perks, and with at least one reserve perk or double, it'll go up to eight which means the total damage output of the weapon is among the lowest we've seen at 829, then 948,000, which is still higher than G-Horn, but pretty much lower than everything else we've tested so far. And the final thing I want to show off is going to be the Whisper of the Worm. So looking at damage of this weapon on Carl, it's named for 55,374. Now looking at right of fire with White Nell, you'll never have to reload. So three shots and six shots will be very quick at under four seconds means the DPS is 103,000 and over two it drops off to 83 and from there it'll barely drop off at all as you shoot more and more and one thing about the Whisper of the Worm is now with White Nell whenever you proc it it pulls one from thin air which means for the total damage output of the weapon it usually holds 18 with double reserves that'll go up to 23 but as you get bullets from thin air it'll actually be a lot more than that over the total reserves of the weapon meaning 1.4 million up to 1.7 million so not only is this weapon very good for dps it's also extremely good for total damage output so overall there were a lot of numbers in this video with some of the top exotic dps weapons in the game so what is the best well for pure dps it seems like a legendary rocket launcher paired with one g horn will result in the best dps and extremely good damage output and if you wanted to use an exotic rocket, Deathbringer always has the best numbers, but on most bosses, you won't be able to achieve those. So I think Coil might be better overall and more consistent. And overall, I would not recommend multiple people using G-Horn at once. Outside of giving your teammates will pack rounds, just because of the fact that it doesn't have a perk and you will never get the impact damage because of the built-in grenades and horseshoes, you're just straight up missing out on damage compared to using legendary rockets with will pack rounds. And finally, if the boss is a crit based boss, or if the boss has a lot of health where they don't die from your rockets, I think Whisper the Worm will be the next best choice because of that great total damage output while still having really good DPS. And yeah, I think that is what the meta boils down to this season. Also, it's worth throwing in that the Parasite is by far the best for burst DPS and over the first few shots, it can hold its own. But once you get past like four or five, that is where everything else will be better. So for raid boss fights, which is kind of like the point of this video, I don't think it really holds its own if you have to shoot all of your ammo. Also making a video like this goes to show you just how broken the Titan combo is 
doing over 3 million damage in a single short charge, which is more damage than all of these different weapons we tested, entire reserves, like times two. So yeah, uh, the Titan build is pretty good. Hopefully this answers some questions of what you should be using in the new Witch Queen raid. I think that's going to be it for the video. Like usual, thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.